I'm Brian Bunce. I'm the editor at large of UBM Canon's Medical Device Group I'm here in Mountain View, California at the Fogarty Institute for Innovation. And I'm here to speak with Dr. Thomas Fogarty, winner of this year's MDEA Lifetime Achievement Award. Which of your achievements are you the most proud of? Yeah, the inventions mm -hmm. I'm most proud of. You know, obviously, I'm proud of being a surgeon. As a surgeon, you benefit of one patient at a time. Mm -hmm. If you develop a technology that can be used on patients, you multiply the reward, mm -hmm. which is very satisfying. You took up entrepreneurship early in life. What led you to go down that path? It's real simple what led me down that path. Lack of money. <laughs> <laughs> so you had no option? No, I, I had no option. Uh, you know, my father died when I was very young. Mm -hmm. So when there was something to be fixed, I was around to do it. And my mom would say, go fix that. And I'd try to fix it. And usually I made it worse. <laughs> but then I made it better. Uh, so I think uh, out of necessity. Mm -hmm. I did, and uh, you know, back then we used to make a lot of our own toys, uh, and so I built model airplanes, mm -hmm. I built soapbox derby cars, mm -hmm. and um, so once again, it's 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 find an environment where you have to survive and do something, and so that's what I did. I've heard you say that you got into medicine by accident, but you've stayed with it for a long time. What is the attraction? I, I think if you're going to be in the field of medicine, uh, you're not going to last long unless you really mm -hmm. enjoy doing it. And I certainly enjoy helping patients. There's a lot of personal satisfaction. Uh, uh, you feel good. The, the patient thanks you. The relatives thank you. And all that feels good. And uh, it's instant gratification if you're a surgeon. And uh, you learn to like that. Could you explain how the Fogarty catheter was developed? Yeah, the Fogarty catheter was developed once again, uh, uh, not by accident, but I was in an environment where it's possible to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, right out of grade school, I, I worked in a um, not-for-profit hospital part-time. What I did was essentially an orderly. I went to the operating room to do the sterilization, mm -hmm. and there I got familiar with all the instruments. I had to clean them. And then I had to pack them, and then I had to sterilize them. Uh, from there, they thought that I'd make a good scrub technician. And the scrub technician essentially hands the instruments to the surgeon. And so I started doing that, I think, when I was a sophomore in high school. Uh, one of the physicians who later became my mentor took a liking to me, and uh, he asked me to work for him uh, uh, part-time, full-time in the summer, and then part-time while I was in school. They had emergencies, he would call me, and then I'd go with them to the hospital. So I saw a lot of surgery. And I saw surgery that worked, I saw surgery that didn't work. And so one that didn't work is when you had a blood clot in an artery. Mm -hmm. uh, there were usually three operations. There was the first operation. Uh, that didn't work, then there was a second operation. And if that didn't work, the third operation was an amputation. And that kept happening over and over again, to the point where when you would do that surgery, 50% of the patients would die. Mm -hmm. And of those that survived, 50% would have had an amputation. So, I mean, that's obviously not a very good result. And so Dr. Cranley uh, said to me, Tom, let's come up with something that's better than this, and he challenged me, and then he helped me uh, all the way through the process. The, there aren't many ideas that you come to, like you see in a cartoon, a bulb goes off <laughs> in your mind. This one was that. Mm -hmm. uh, since then, there's very few that have come to me like that. Uh, but this one was, I thought of it. He said it makes sense, and he said, go make one, and I went and made one, and then he used it. And so that was very satisfying. And at that time, uh, there was no FDA regulation relative to devices. Mm -hmm. It took about six weeks for us to use that clinically. And he made me do all the things that the FDA requires you to do now, but it wasn't horrendously 
extensive evaluation. I did all the bench testing, I did the cadaver testing, the animal testing, and the sterilization testing. But we just got it done quickly and expediently. And then to use it, all what you needed was the approval of the um, chief of surgery in any given hospital. You had to show him the device, show him your evidence, and then you went and used it. 